So we're out here working on the car today. Gonna uh, try to get some high build primer on the Civic here. Got everything roughly taped in. Trying to save some time today, so I went ahead and uh, got the majority of the taping done. But I'm gonna show you, uh, kind of give you a rundown of it. So first, let's look at the materials and products we're gonna be using. Also, I'm at a different place today. Um, I'm at where I used to live, but I still have my compressor and everything over here. So I'm gonna be doing it here. Since we're just doing a little bit of priming, we're just gonna do it outside. Uh, whenever I get around to actually doing the painting, we're gonna be doing it in a garage setting. So, okay, I'm gonna be getting into a lot of the more specifics as far as uh, painting and stuff, spraying uh, when we get into the uh, actual painting video. But first, I'll go ahead and tell you, you know, if you're gonna be running a paint gun, that you're gonna want at least a 60 gallon, five horse, two stage compressor. You're gonna want some type of air dryer, like a desiccant system. It's a pretty good bang for your book. I've had good luck with those. Um, if you don't want any moisture in your paint, get a nice, good, efficient compressor with a good air dryer. You won't ever have any trouble with any moisture in your uh, in your paint. So, um, also um, this particular uh, high build I'm using is Omni. I haven't used it in a few years. I was using a different product, so I can't really remember how uh, the specifics on it as far as how it flows out, but. I'm going to be using a, um, a one point, I switched my gun to a 1.8 tip because typically a high build is a little thicker. I also like to reduce it a little bit just to make it flow easier. I'm going to be using a Omni Urethane 2K high build. Also always make sure you, fit, you follow state and federal guidelines as far as EPA and any of that type of stuff when you get into painting and aerosols and stuff like that. And make sure you use PPE, you know, the very minimum of respirator, natural gloves. Um, and if you really are doing some painting, get a paint suit. But I'm gonna show you some. I'm gonna show you the car how it looks right now. Um, some of the products we're using, and then we're gonna finish getting it masked up, and then we'll get some primer on it. Okay, so got some 3M plastic um, masking paper, masking tape, low lint prep wipes. Um, just some cheap uh, paper towels, natural gloves, respirator, mixing sticks, foaming, foaming glass cleaner for cleaning the surface. Then you go back over it with uh, your wax and grease remover. Got lacquer thinner for cleaning the gun uh, reducer. Um, tack wipe right before we spray. Um, We've got some <clears throat> self etch and the aerosol that we're going to spray on our bare, bare metal spots right before we put the uh, actual primer on. This is the primer we're going to be using. The activator, some quart mixing cups, uh, gun, and that's pretty much it. So that's the car. So we're going to be doing the whole hood, front half of the fender spot on the door, spot down here, spot down here, here, um, the edges of the quarters here, the trunk, the entire top piece probably just spot in right here, quarter here, here, spot on the roof, um, the dog leg here, spot way down there here on the rocker and the whole fender on this side Okay, just got everything masked off here. It took me, I spent probably about two hours taking this thing up and don't critique it, I done. It was still a rather quick job, but it's pretty much just plastic the whole car and then just cut out the areas that um, I'm gonna be spraying. We're 
gonna go over everything with some foaming glass cleaner. And just get everything wiped off. And then after that, we'll come back with wax and grease removal. I just want to cover everything with uh, wax and grease remover and a uh, lint free or low lint towel. Um, with wax and grease remover, you want to have one rag to put it on with, one rag to take it right back off. You don't want to um, allow it to dry and, and leave any residue on it. Um, you don't want any possibilities of fish shy in your finish. So now we're going to mix up some of the primer. So I like to use one of these mixing cups. It makes it a little easier. But um, you want to check the uh, manufacturer because every a lot of products are different. So they're not all the same. Um, I use a lot of PPG. Generally, most everything they sell is four to one, which means four parts material. In this case, primer to one part hardener. So the way you can mix it is you can just do the math on it. So you know, four ounces of primer, one ounce of uh, activator. Or just to make it easier to have these mixing cups for these ratios, you find four to one. See, I will mix my primer up to where, however I need it. If I want to go up to the eight on the four, put the primer to eight, and then I'll put my hardener up to the eight. So primer will be here, and then hardener will be from. I will just uh, put hardener till I get up to the eight. Same with if I was doing four to one to one, which um, I'm probably going to do now. Uh, four parts um, primer, one part activator, one part reducer. So that will work as well. You also got, you know, one to one, um, five to one. Most of your products are gonna be either four to one or two to one generally, unless you got bases. Bases are typically one to one, one part base, one part reducer. So I'm gonna get this stuff mixed up and then um, I'll get some of this, um, we'll get the primer stirred and we'll get some mixed. primer up to the four let's find the scale I'm using I mean I put it up to the eight so now we're gonna mix a hardener up to the next eight okay actually I'm gonna add a little reducer I'm using slow reducer I use slow for everything pretty much and we'll get into that more um, on the paint video. I 
Always use a clean strainer so you don't get any foreign materials in. I always thought this was kind of a waste of time until I actually mixed some product up and ended up having um, some chunks in here, so which would have ended up in the gun and stopping the gun up and possibly going in our paint job, so definitely worth the extra time to do this. I'll add your lid. And always make sure that the the vent hole on top of the lid is free because um, over time, if you reuse these a lot, you can get uh, paint buildup in there. So you've got three basic adjustments on the paint gun. You've got your air inlet, which I regulate with a pressure regulator and a gauge. Some guns have another adjustment right here, but you always leave that out and regulate it at the gun inlet. Next, you have your fluid. When I'm spraying any kind of top coats, I leave the fluid all the way out. I leave my fan pretty well out. Sometimes I have to dial it in a little bit. Um, that depends on the uh, air pressure you're running. So, so when you're doing top coats, that gives you, it's easy because you've really only got, the only thing you really have to worry about is your air pressure because you're leaving your fluid all the way out, your fan pretty well out. But anytime you adjust your pressure, you want to check the pattern and that way you dial your, uh, your fan in if you need to. Now I've, um, usually if I'm spraying top coats, I'll spray about 30 PSI. I've turned the pressure down a little bit, I've turned the fluid in, and I've turned the, pretty much turned all my adjustments in because I want to get a small, uh, I want a really small controlled spray because I'm not, until I get on the hood, then I'll open it up. But for these small spots, I want a small controlled spray because you don't want overspray going everywhere. What I'm going to do now is, since I'm about ready to spray, I'm going to uh, tack, use a tack rag and wipe everything down. I'm not going to show that. Just wipe everything down, it gets that last little bit of dust off. I'm gonna take some aerosol can um, of that self hitch and then I'm just gonna lightly spray over any bare metal areas and then we're gonna come back and start primer. Got one coat on. Shouldn't take long for that to flash off. It's probably about ready to go and put another one on because it's kind of pretty hot out here. But pretty much covered everything. So on a spot like this, I had a small repair. 
on my first coat, I try to go beyond the area, cover the size of the area that I'm going to work. My second coat, I bring it in a little bit. Third coat, I bring it in a little bit. That way you're not stacking primer all the way up to the edge. And you're going to make it really hard to blend, to uh, block and blend out, uh, feather out. So, make it big first and then bring it in. That way, if you make it small first and then you're layering it bigger and bigger, then you're really stacking solvents on top of each other. It's going to make it harder um, for it to dry. So, it's easy to go ahead and do it like this. So, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the next, uh, next coat. back on the car today so as you've seen um, we had just finished getting the high build on the car and I've given it about three days to fully cure um, I like to give it as, at least three days if I can I mean you can hit it before that but it's really better to let the gas all the way out um, anyway so I'll show you what I got so far I actually started sanding on some of it so I'm going to show you the hood and what it looks like at this point I've got it where I feel good about uh, ready for paint pretty much so I'll let you check that out and then we'll talk about the rest of the car okay so this is the hood I got a coat and blocked the whole thing out with 400 now with 400 I mean that should be ready to then we're painting it white um, and we're gonna seal it this should actually be fine to go ahead and paint but just to be sure in case there's any Still any heavy scratches that didn't get completely filled in. I'm just gonna buzz over this with 600 on the DA with an interface pad <clears throat> just to try and not, um, just refine a little bit of the scratches. Um, I haven't hit the fender yet um, or this part of the fender. I put it, it's got some guide coat on it. So today I wanna be working on the trunk the deck lid. Um, I went ahead and put some guide coat on it. I use a aerosol guide coat, but it's a dry powder guide coat. Some of your aerosol dry coat uh, guide coats um, are more of like a spray paint, and they will tend to clog your paper up. Your dry um, guide coats typically will not. So, um, if you try and get a dry guide coat, or like I said, a aerosol uh, powder dry guide coat. And because the worst thing you want, the last thing you want to do is be clogging up all your paper. Pretty much, since we got this entire panel done, what we're looking for is you just want to block it out until um, your guide coat is going to show the low spots that haven't been hit yet with the sandpaper. So you just want to keep working the area until you get rid of all the guide coat. Now, if I'm doing a whole panel like this, I would like to cut everything down, get everything smooth. Eliminate all the guide coat, they'll let me know everything's smooth and sanded. But I would like for the whole panel to be pretty well uh, still covered in primer, um, being that I've done so much body work on it. If you have a few cut throughs, that's fine. You know, as long as you still got everything flat like we did on the hood. I had a few cut throughs on the hood, you know, around the edges, um, but mainly like in this area here. So we had a really low spot here, obviously. So I had a cut through there and a cut through here because I had some blemishes here, but everything is still really smooth. I was able to get a smooth finish and like I said, we're going to seal it. So it's really not going to matter with that, but if you've got too many imperfections, um, you know, you might have to reprime it. 
Um, and that's what I'm trying not to do because I really don't want to put any more uh, work into it than I have to. Being that, you know, I skimmed this whole thing and I feel like I've got it really smooth before the primer, I feel like I'll be able to get um, the primer blocked out really nice without having to redo it. So if you're not doing an entire panel, you just, where you just done spots, uh, you just want to Obviously, you want to guide through that, block that out until it's nice and smooth. But what you want to look for is the area surrounding it. You want to, uh, you want to feather it out really good so that you don't have, so that you don't don't want any hard edges or anything. You don't want to paint over that, and you'll be able to see everything. Like we kind of hit this area here, and I got it nice and smooth, and everything around it has feathered out really nicely into the surrounding area. So all of that should cover up really well whenever it's painted. One more thing to note, and I knew this would be an issue why I've done it, but I've done it anyway. Um, so again, I'm just trying to show you some kind of how to do things at home. But since I primed this outside on a really hot day, the primer was drying really quick, and the panel being in the sun was really hot. So it was drying almost instantly as I'm putting it on. So that created a lot of dry spatter and a lot of texture. Uh, mainly on the trunk and the hood since they were flat areas uh, parallel to the sun. On these side parts, not so bad, being they won't in the direct sun, but so the problem with it being that I have uh, texture in it is with high build, even though it builds high, and even though you're gonna sand it, you get a few imperfections, a little bit of dirt, whatever, it's usually not a big deal because you're usually gonna sand it out. Even though you are standing it smooth, you don't want any more texture than you have to. You want it to get on. You want to put it on as smooth as you can because the smoother I get it, the more build I'm going to get. Because it's really textured. It's got a lot of texture and it's really rough. Um, a lot of my sanding is going to be just trying to get that smooth. Not necessarily the body work. Um, so by the time I just get that smooth, I may have already sanded half the material off. Versus if I laid it down nice and smooth, can barely cut into it and it'd already be smooth. So then I have all that material left to refine the panel. So that's one issue I ran. I think that's why we had a couple little cut throughs in the hood, but it's still not a big deal. I got it, I was able to get it how I wanted it. So we're gonna go ahead and start on this trunk. This one has some texture in it. Not too concerned about it. Hopefully I'll be able to get everything how I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting into that with uh, 400 grit on a block. Another good thing to remember is to use a quality paper. I've used lots of different brands. Finally found one <clears throat> that works really well, lasts long, and uh, it's resistant to clogging. Uh, some of your primers are um, really bad for clogging up papers, and you don't want to be constantly switching paper out. You know, it's a lot of waste, a lot of money, makes you less productive. So. Use a quality paper, and I must go ahead and say that just because it's the most expensive does not mean it's the best. So, you might have to shop around a little bit, try some different ones, but uh, use a good paper. Um, anyway, what we're going to do is we're just going to cross hatch, sand it just like we did when we were cutting the filler. Another thing is, if you're going to be using a spray on guide coat, the best time to put that on is while the car still maxed up. I forgot, and then I had to. Yeah, you know, put some more masking paper down. So, but already got this um, guide coated, so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting into it. Just have a couple minutes, you can already tell. See the spots we have sanded. Well, you know, we sand this whole area, but tell you got some texture there. A low spot here. So yeah, just keep working it. Until eventually everything is just nice and gray and uniform. Yeah, it's actually this primer. 
is uh, cutting pretty good. The sandpaper is not clogging up, so should go through. Um, should be a pretty quick process on it. They got top of the lid looking really good. A couple little breakthroughs, but it's nice and smooth. No texture. No more dye coat. Next step is going to be going into this front edge. I'm going to be using the thin block. So, go ahead and start hitting that. I got the trunk lid blocked out where I'm happy with it. So let's show you what it looks like. Okay, everything nice and smooth. No texture, no guide coat. A few breakthroughs, but gonna seal everything up and I don't think we'll have any problems out of any of that stuff. Also got this, these edges kind of worked in. Everything nice and smooth. You can see you get a, things nice and feathered out even. Still gotta go around, you know, all the edges and all these panels, but That'll be the last thing we do before we paint. So, so what I'm gonna work on now is I'm gonna work on this quarter. Try to get that uh, leveled out and feathered in. Okay, so just like that, I got this spot prepped out. So we got rid of all the guide coat. We got a nice, I'm gonna hit that edge a little bit. I still gotta hit this edge a little bit, but for the most part, it's feathered out good. Had one little breakthrough. But I'm not concerned about it. I think once we uh, get our sealer on there and get everything covered, I don't think you'll ever notice. Now, if you were to skip, um, you didn't seal this area and just went straight to base then you would probably see this little ring here once we get sealed on it it should should cover everything up um so the only other thing will be you know if this spot is a tad high just barely just tap that a little bit you can reprime this area and then come back and uh re-block it and everything but i'm not concerned about it. i think once we seal it up it'll everything's gonna blend in so but again um, if you were just to go straight to base, you would probably see that little outline there. But other than that, I'm happy with that. Just gonna go around the edge a little bit. So about the only other thing we got left to do is spot on the door, the rockers, the fender, front of the fender on the other side, and the rocker on the other side, and we'll be pretty well squared away.
Okay, so I've got everything blocked out. Happy with how everything turned out. Things cut it out nice, got a good feel on it. I might have to still come back and like, you know, hit the edges and everything, but got everything leveled out where I'm happy with it. A few breakthroughs here and there, but our sealer will take care of all of that before we put our base on. Okay, so I blocked it out with 400. You can, um, I just started with four. Um, I didn't bother with trying to start with 320 or something like that. Work my way up to four. Four cuts pretty good on this, so I just started with four. The way when I'm done, I'm done. Um, with what we're doing here, sealer, face clear, and being white, you can usually get away with doing 400, you know, pretty easy. Uh, I probably wouldn't do it on a darker color like black or probably anything other than white. But um, I'd go with six just to be sure. Uh, because sometimes on a darker color, um, you can still see scratches through 400. So the rest of the car is already out in, prepped out in six. I've got all the primered areas finished out in 400. So what I'm going to do next is put a soft interface pad on our DA here. And we're just going to buzz over the areas. That we blocked out with 400 with 600 and this interface face pad is really soft so you know we're not trying to shape anything all we're really trying to do is just buzz over and just refine any of these scratches to make sure we don't have anything show back up so i'm not going to show you how to do that it's like 250 degrees out here i'm just ready to get it done you see me run the da before really nothing different so i'm just going to buzz over all this and then this car will be uh hit the edges and this car really be ready for paint till we get it cleaned up real good. But I'm gonna go do this and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Okay, so we have the car prepped out. Sorry about the noise in the background, but um, we blocked all the primer out with 400 and we buzzed back over that with 600 on the DA with the interface pad. And I'm very happy with how everything is. One thing we got left to do now is go over, get all the edges, make sure all the edges are good, and then uh, you know, get this thing really clean. We'll be ready to uh, go ahead and put some color on. Other things I gotta do is I got a few pieces of trim, door handles I gotta stuff up, and uh, other than that, we'll be pretty much ready to paint this thing. So just gotta clean it all up, but I think it looks really good. Got some dust on there, but everything looks really good. I'm really happy with everything. How everything come out nice and smooth. I think it's going to end up being a nice job once we get, a, once we get the top coats on. So that's pretty much it for this video. So in this video we talked about um, the priming process. Uh, like I said, unfortunately I've done it in the yard, which is not optimal, but that gives you an idea of what you can do. So yeah, that pretty much going to sum it up. So on the next video we'll get into um, you know, masking the car off and getting some color on it. So look out for that one probably in a, about a week or two. Um, Go ahead and start on that one. I got a little bit of work to do at the uh, paint room. Haven't been used in a while. I gotta get it cleaned up, get my compressor and everything going over there. So, but yeah, just make sure you look forward, uh, be looking out for that one. And that's pretty much that video will probably wrap it up. Other than I might come back, you know, and show a assembly and then the finished product. But hopefully, this gives you some insight on the whole process. So, stay tuned and uh, look out for the next video.